internet, a howling movie a day, day four, and it, someone had told me that we were going to be watching an entry into the howling series that was directed by the guy that directed Hammer's Upside Down <laughs> Twins of Evil uh, and The Legend of Hell House. I would assume that we were in nice, safe hands. Unfortunately, The Howling 4, the original nightmare, is, is, it, is it, it looks like it's a movie that was made on the cheap. It looks like a made-for-TV movie back when TV wasn't kicking cinema's ass like it is now and uh, made-for-TV was actually a sort of backhanded insult rather than a description. The movie can't really make up its mind and I think the reasons behind that whilst watching it are the same reasons that this movie was kind of crippled from the start. I don't know what kind of budget it was made on but whoever was in charge of the purse strings kept a very very tight hold of them uh, and I say that with a view to the type of werewolf because in the, the necessary shots at the very end of the movie where it turns out that everyone in the town of Drago is a werewolf and transforms, they use a pack of dogs and then uh, put red eyes, uh, special effects over the top of them. And really, honestly, between us horror fans, if a werewolf movie uses dogs as stand-ins for fully transformed werewolves. I don't know anyone that's ever really impressed with that. But at the same time, it, it wants to be a creature feature werewolf movie. And so we get this, we, uh, we get this wolf at the end. And I love that werewolf design. Uh, they. All the money is in the final 10 minutes of the movie, which is why the preceding uh, hour and 20 minutes, to a certain extent, is such a drag. Um, and I can't fathom uh, the thinking of putting all the, uh, putting money into an animatronic head like that, which goes onto an actor's body, and, uh, and their torso and arms uh, are made up uh, with the claws and the fur and everything like that to, to to bring this creature out at the end of the movie and then have it do nothing but stand on the spot where the guy had transformed into it, go and, and have the actor do that. Maybe he had wires come out, out the back of his head so that they could move the jaw so that 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 was literally all all he, it could it could do, but it seems like right we we've, we've saved some money up for the finale of the film, and here's all the money <laughs> pretty much on screen, and <sighs> which is such a shame because I love that werewolf design. There's a there's a sort of there's an exaggeration of the man wolf that ties in with the notion in this film that werewolves are, are, are a type of demon. There's a sort of satanic element to it. Um, and the townsfolk during, during the husband's transformation are chanting uh, sort of cod Latin about Satan and Satanis. So they're supposed to be demons. So this, this look is, is, is perfectly in keeping with that. And I just get a kick out of werewolves that walk on their hind legs that are huge. And I don't mind enormous distended gaping mouths. I, I love that look. But then when, when they do nothing, I, I, becoming, I become very frustrated. There's stuff to like in the final 10 minutes. Um, but um, you kind of have to get through the rest of the movie first. I mean, technically, the, the first sighting is is at sixty five minutes during the the seduction and sex scene. By the way, 
this story is a re-attempt to tell Gary Brandner's uh, original The Howling novel. So that's why when you watch it, it will feel like uh, a very close retread to the original film, The Howling. Because uh, what Joe Dante and John Sales did is that they took the key beats from the novel, kept those and basically made their own film around it. Uh, what this film does is it sticks a little closer to the book and it's not the better for it because the book is the book and it's slightly, it's pulpy, but it's slightly more psychological about, about the woman, want, you know, the howling she hears at night, everyone's telling her she's crazy. And the reason everyone's telling her she's crazy and she's imagining it is because uh, she's been attacked, she's had, a, she's had a nervous breakdown and uh, also for the very good reason that all of the people in the town that are telling her she's crazy are werewolves and she's not crazy and the ending happens. In a book, you can be inside the character's head uh, and, and, and learn from that. But in, in a movie, um, you're just watching a woman repeatedly being told that she's crazy whilst you're sitting there thinking, for crying out loud, this is the fourth movie in the Howling series. I know she's not crazy. Where are the werewolves? Where are the werewolves? Can I see some werewolves now, please? So at 65 minutes, we get our first sort of shot, which is during the sex stroke attack scene where the husband, uh, the adulterous husband gets bitten, so he'll become a werewolf later on. And it, it's an insert shot of a, of a werewolf puppet head. <sighs> and, uh, and, and that's it. Uh, like I say, literally everything else is in the final 10 minutes of the movie. Um, a poodle dies. Boo! I don't like movies that kill dogs. Um, some people will think that's strange while well, happily sit down and watch movies of people getting heads and limbs lopped off left, right and centre and tortured and killed. Uh, but I, I don't like animals getting killed in movies. Uh, I, I own a couple of dogs, so and I don't own a couple of people, <laughs> so maybe it's that. Um, there are a couple of hikers that get killed, but it's the classic money-saving case of the, the camera is the point of view of the werewolf, so if you, if you want a camera chasing after a couple of people through some woods while they scream at the camera, that, that's what you've got here. This is where the movie pays you back for all the patience you've shown getting to the final 10 minutes of the movie because it gives you two transformations and from a practical special effects point of view, I love both of them, low budget or no. They're two completely different takes on werewolf transformations. Uh, I'm mindful of uh, the wonderful Neil Jordan movie, A Company of Wolves, which features different types of werewolves and different types of werewolf transformations throughout it. Um, <clears throat> and this, to my mind, kind of makes up for the dogs as fully transformed werewolves. First, the, the husband, uh, Richard. Uh, after he's bitten by his, uh, his his lover, finally transforms at the end of the movie. And I love it. It's a full body melt. I'm a fan of body melts anyway. Um, if you think of Jerry Dandridge's um, human helper, when he's turned into a vampire at the end of Fright Night uh, and, and melts, it's a little like that. There's a full body melt. I think it's David Warner melts in front of the camera in an HP Lovecraft inspired film Necronomicon and in this the werewolf transformation involves uh, the husband at first uh, you know the moon hits him and he starts to feel the pain and then he starts to melt so you've got the ooze coming down from his face you've got, you've got shots of his of the, the boots and the trouser legs exactly like in in Fright Night with all the gunk coming out of the trouser legs running down to form a puddle around his boots then uh, a little bit more makeup. You've got the prosthetics with the ooze bursting through, and then, then you know the hand gets put up, uh, and it's it's a model hand that sort of melts away down to the bone, and then a superb, <laughs> gross oozy puppet and the skeleton hand claws the ragged flesh off, exposing his skull. By this point, the puddle of ooze and bodily fluids around him is enormous and the skeleton's still still mobile 
with a jaw going and there's one sort of human hand still scraping and smacking on, on the ground just to hammer the point home that he's still in pain even though he's mostly a skeleton now sort of crumbles and descends and sinks into this black pile of goo whilst around him the townsfolk unfortunately with sort of fake fur and teeth in contact lenses who stand around and go <laughs> towards the camera we'll ignore that uh, are chanting their satanic chant and then from out of the bubbling puddle of ooze the protein werewolf form comes out and he's he's reconstituted and retransformed back into the werewolf i've never seen a werewolf transformation like that i freaking love it the movie won me back over it's worth it it's worth it for that then uh, his his wife uh, our heroine and her friends go into the, the bell tower that the story revolves around and the doctor's in there but surprise surprise dun, 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 the doctor's also a werewolf this shouldn't be a surprise to them at this point but, but this doctor turns around and his face is all sort of distorted it looks almost like a troll and he's hunched over he's sort of he's already starting to transform his face is all swollen and expanded he's got a huge mouth and he tears the human flesh away from his face to expose the, the animal jaw and the sharp teeth i love a werewolf transformation where the person tears their human flesh off and the wolf is underneath and he becomes uh that wolf i showed you the picture of earlier and unfortunately doesn't do anything after that but um if you get nothing from this movie you get a couple of excellent transformations that uh, are a different take on the transformations we've seen before and have seen in other films and for that I guess it, it gives me a kind of soft spot a practical FX soft spot for the movie that you can sit and watch on a Sunday afternoon and it can play a little bit like the afternoon drama of the day a sort of lifetime drama about a woman who has a nervous breakdown and her husband is cheating on her and she thinks she's going crazy and everyone's telling her she's going crazy and she's seeing things and it can be one of those sort of lifetime dramas except at the end the husband melts and turns into a werewolf and the doctor rips his face off and turns into a demon monster from hell the, the final 10 minutes sort of saved the entire movie it's where all the money's gone um the rest of it i can damn with faint praise uh but that it's a blast <laughs>